Hello everybody. So we're going to fix some stuff that we did a little bit earlier with age dating of the Tuolumne Intrusive Complex. So we're back in Bateman 1988, TIC, and in our last assignment you created an isochron diagram where we plotted rubidium strontium here against strontium 8786. Now you might remember that in this document here we noticed that the y-axis excuse me, the x-axis should really be rubidium 87 over strontium 86. And what we did is we took a shortcut and just took rubidium over strontium because that's all we have. This is total rubidium that was analyzed divided by the total amount of strontium. Uh, and we got these numbers that look like this. So we uh, had a slope here of 0 0.0036. So there's M, that is the slope, and using 0 0.0036, we get an age of 3 times 10 to the 8 years, uh, actually it's uh, 2,570 million years. I've, what I've done here is I just take this age, divide it by 10 to the 6, so I can turn it into millions of years. And that's way too old. Zircon age dates are something like 92 million years old. Now there could be various reasons for the problem. Um, it could be that we have the wrong model. Maybe these are not all from the same magma system, but maybe it's the way we've done the calculation, and that's what we're going to fix here. So what we're going to do is go into Google, and we're going to search on abundances of isotopes of rubidium. And what you'll see is that the rubidium isotopes have different abundances. All right, fair enough. Uh, rubidium 87 represents 27.8% of all rubidium. So what we can do is come back into the spreadsheet, and I've entered it as a fraction, 0.279, represents the fraction of rubidium that is rubidium 87. So we can create a new column, and we'll call it uh, 87 rubidium. And that would be equal to 0 0.279. I want to fill down. I'm just going to put dollar signs around both of those and multiply that against the amount of rubidium that's listed over here. So even though we see a total rubidium concentration of, where did it go, uh, 134 ppm, only about 37 ppm is actually rubidium 87. And then the same thing for strontium 86. You can do a Google search and find that strontium 86 is about 0 0.0986 of the total amount of strontium. So I've entered that value here, and uh, that's a constant. I don't want that to change, so I'm surrounded by dollar signs. We'll multiply that by the total amount of strontium, which is here. And then we'll fill down both of these. So there we go. We've had, we have estimates. These aren't measured isotopes. Um, so a lot of times these will be measured. But if you get a data set where they're not measured, you could do these simple calculations. And so for the true rubidium 87 strontium 86 ratio, what should really be the true x-axis in this diagram, it would be this over that, and that is going to be a number that will be quite a bit higher than the strontium, the rubidium strontium ratios that we saw earlier. So this is 0 0.571, whereas if we took all of rubidium and strontium, it's something like 0 0.2. Well, what I want you to do is update all your graphs. And that's going to be really easy because you can see you've already got a graph like this created. So this is our data for the cathedral peak. So for the cathedral peak, I was getting an age of 257, but that's when I use column AJ as the x-axis. But instead, I want column BF. So over here, AJ will become BF. There's one other edit, AJ becomes BF. 
what I've done is I simply clicked on this chart and then selected the data, and that's when those cell references come up. And then the beauty of this is, look at that. Now that the slope has changed from 0.0036 to 0.0013. Uh, from the previous assignment, you already had these calculations set up here. So I'll just change 0.0036 to 0.0013, and I get this age, or 92.9 million years. And that's about what we get from the zircon data. So go ahead and go back and create these new columns. Uh, you can go to Google search to verify these values. It's not 0.099, it's actually 0.0986 or 9.86%. And then calculate new ages for all of the geologic units. So just, you already have these charts made. All you have to do is go in, select the chart, select the data, That'll allow the formula bar to show the cell references for those data, and then switch the column from whatever you used for rubidium strontium to the new calculated values of the actual rubidium 87 strontium 86 values. And that's it.